Hey guys, Wadok Studios here, and today we're going to quickly go over what my channel is about. If you're not familiar with my channel, I'm a 90% Unreal Engine dev channel. I'm familiar with Godot and Unity. Um, I support a community of developers, indie all the way up to AAA. Uh, if you haven't, check out the description. The link is there for the Discord. Uh, we would love to have you if um, you're also on this journey and looking for an awesome community uh, to, to share information with and exchange questions, etc. Um, in the past, I am, I'm, <laughs> my channel has grown due to the fact that I have done tutorials and performance optimization videos on UE5 in the midst of what seems to be this massive amount of hate. Now, um, if you haven't already, check out the UE5 performance optimization video. I talk about how you can just take the off-the-shelf UE5 and rain it down as as um, much as possible to get on even 8th gen platforms. Um, but that's what my channel is about. I'm a I, I I develop tools, resources, custom branches, etc., to give back to the Unreal Engine community. Um, I'm 20 years in de deep uh, this year. It'll be 21 years next year. And essentially, um, I'm trying to offer what wasn't available to me whenever I started this journey. Uh, it was one hell of a journey. And um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's just I'm one of those dudes that like to say, hey, what did I what would I wish I had back then? How can I make that available to people now um, that I'm where I am? So hopefully um you know this this uh, information and the things that are shared helps people. I support a custom 427 branch for Quest 2. It's a very tough target to hit. Um, UE 427 has been deprecated for the most part. There's a plus branch, and uh, the meta supported 427 branch has um, started to break apart at the seams. So um, this is my way of helping you know those guys out and today in the same vein of that we're going to talk about embark studios these guys by many will be considered the goats of ue5 and um similar to rocksteady whenever ue4 was coming out and deferred rendering was jumping from ue3 to ue4 um we were going from forward into deferred uh there was a bunch of like this is history repeating itself there was a bunch of performance stuff and again the developer forms is available to anyone if like I would recommend like don't get caught up in all the hate mantra um there's all this like finger pointing between you know Tim and I love that dude but you know Tim and developers and people saying oh it's not the engine it's the developer at the end of the day dude they're like the reality is if you're an engineer and you're in this space you know the truth is you have to get from point a to point b and there's both budget and time allocation to do so is it the developer's responsibility to release a performant game to you yes it is it is the developer's responsibility and that doesn't matter if you break out notepad and you you custom code your own in-house engine um but the reality is is that takes a lot of resources a lot of time and a lot of money Gamers, on the other hand, are receiving your product. They don't care. They're going to blame the developer based on the choices that the studio and the developer choose. But any person, um, I don't care if you're, uh, I say any person, any laborer, I don't care if you're a, a painter, if you're a developer, if you're an engineer, if you're a mechanic, will tell you that the quality of their output is dependent upon the quality of their workflow and their tools. That's just truth. If you buy crappy tools or you don't buy the right tool for the job or you're not using an optimized and efficient workflow, people are going to go, oh, well, that's skill. It's kind of true. You have to be knowledgeable of the space and you have to use what's available at the time. But sometimes in a market where people who produce the tools that you use have chose to go a different way, it can impact you. It can impact studios. And Embark in this day and age, these dudes are considered the goats in my eyes because there's a certain place in UE4's life cycle where they could have taken that engine and they could have hit these same targets without as much work. But that's where my hats go off to these dudes because what did Embark do? They studied UE5. They said it's a great renderer. It is. Uh, anyone with, like, you know, you'd have to be a blind one-eyed pirate that um, has a patch over both eyes to not be able to see that Unreal Engine 5 is um, a beast. And it can, you know, uh, produce some of the best visual quality of, of any renderer pipeline on the market right now. So 
they decided, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. And I have a, a podcast with MR3D Dev talking about custom engines versus off the shelf engines coming up. So this content will kind of bleed over into that a little bit. But Embark decided we don't we don't need to deal with that. It, we got some stuff that we can utilize. But what they did do is they said, where is Unreal Engine 5 heavy? They likely took older hardware. They loaded the base engine up. They said, what's my fragment shader cost, my compute cost, and my rendering thread, uh, my draw call cost on, on CPUs, what those ranges are. Um, what's what's my rendering cost uh, as far as like um, dealing with an LOD pipeline, large world coordinate systems, um, WPO, tessellation, all of these things. What's my physical physics thread cost? Um, and then they decided, okay, this is what we're going to keep, and this is what we're going to modify, uh, you know, without bringing breaking any kind of NDAs, and because I know a lot of developers in this space, ranging from triple uh, A's down to indies. Um, last I've heard, they're on five three, and I'm going to share with you guys a branch that is uh, internally in the Wildox Studios, taking a very similar path than what Embark did. So. We already know chaos is heavy and bark themselves have done talks on this other studios have done talks on this people are foregoing chaos it's a great cinematic physics thread uh physics solver it's however really really expensive for games and optimizing it is a lot of work in the current ue5 workflow and this isn't hate this is coming from a dude that loves this engine it just is what it is can you use it sure are you going to use it in the way that on the scope of what Embark games have done without, uh, while still being able to run on the uh, minimum specs that they're able to run? No, you're not, because they did that to be able to do what you see, what their products are. Both the finals and Arc Raiders can run on this hardware because of the choices they've made to strip out parts of the UE5 core to run on cheaper solutions. Part of that is normal sweep events, normal hit events, moving your character around. Physics doesn't just solve claw simulations and destruction. Physics solves any event, and that means walking over an overlap to pop up a UI the display event for you. It solves character movement. It solves far more. It solves sweeps and hits. It solves far more on a CPU thread than simply you know, cloth and, and destruction. Um, so at its core, again, thinking about 64 bit architecture, thinking about full doubles and what your, a, what your CPU has to chew on Embark decided, you know what, we're going to go back to a 32 bit solver. We're going to likely forego large world coordinates and stay within a 32 bit float range forego chewing on those heavy doubles and stick with phys X. Um, and that's what this branch does. The other thing that Embark knew is that Lumen is heavy. Lumen is great. And in my previous videos, I talk about how you can use software ray trace Lumen, but there's, again, don't take my word for it. The developer forms are there for you. Go look at the engineers and the conversations that are happening between de developers. I'm not here to pass on hate. I'm just trying to talk about this in general. I'm trying to speak on a person that loves this engine and is trying to help people understand the most optimal path, which at this time, so early in UE5's life, in 5657, that just so happens to be that you have to do some work with this engine to get to this place. You're not going to take it off the shelf and perform the way that Embark Studios is performing. These, And I'm trying to help you understand that. So in a way, when people are blaming the engine, um, in that aspect, it is the dev's responsibility and Epic's responsibility to have this harmony together to be able to perform optimally on the market hardware at the time. And if Epic can't give the devs that, the devs have to give themselves that. So you understand how that works here? If you buy a big paintbrush and you need a small one, you got to cut it into a small one to make the strokes that you want to produce. That's what's happening here. And that's what 99.9% .9 of my videos have been about. The other thing is they went with RTX GI, right? So if you go look at the finals and you go look at Art Raiders, you'll understand that they're using a different GI method. They're different. They're using a different global illumination technology. That is also one of the biggest weights of UE5. And Embark has 
provided a custom solution inside of UB5 to, to solve for this. Um, so yeah, this branch uh, is a UB5 zero fork, which meant that physics integration was relatively easy to still port forward from 427. But it also has DDGI, SSGI. It also has, like we said, physics. It has RTXDI. There is a W uh, work in process tessellation, and we're not talking about nanite tessellation. We're talking about traditional, normal rasterization on the GPU tessellation. So if you've looked at the finals and you've looked at uh, Embark Studios Arc Raiders, you'll notice they don't use nanite. They're still relying on the traditional workflow um, that was in 427 with LODs and HLODs. Um, and they're relying on more game friendly uh, uh, core systems uh, to perform very optimally on older hardware. It's, it is what it is. So um, while the, it is a little bit more work, we are trying to collectively garner um, within the Wildox Studios Discord a path that follows the example set by the goats, right? And uh, Embark is going to ultimately end up in the same place as Rocksteady with like Batman um, back whenever, you know, they made certain decisions within Unreal Engine. Um, in one way, they went with UE4, they, they tailored it, they cut it, they made it what they needed to make it for one episode of Batman. And they decided, you know what, forward rendering in UE3 is still the way to go. And we ended up with arguably one of the best, you know, Arkham Knight, uh, the best freaking Batman game ever made on that system um arc is going i mean not arc embark is going to end up being going down in history as a guys that jumped into this engine really early and kind of along with cd project wet red being one of those studios that paved the way and showed the way on how to how to as a studio take an off the shelf engine and instead of writing you your own from the very ground up and for go going like the expense of that and the maintainability of that etc how to take an engine that is off the shelf and tailor it to your needs and still love something for the benefits that it gives you but also be real with you enough to let you know how to modify that thing in cases where certain aspects of it struggle to hit what would consider to be the majority of your target market right now. If you are a studio and you're aiming for 50, 80s, 50, 90s, um, and I, I hate to toss this shade out there, but if you're Borderlands 4 and you're, um, and, and you're 2K, uh, gearbox, then, you know, you have your target and what you're trying to do. And, um, you have your choices that you made, but if your other studios that are like, Oh, the majority of hardware that are out there right now are mid range RTX cards and high end GTX cards, then you're going to do something like embark is doing, and you're going to reap those benefits and your game is going to be received in a much different way. And the work, the sweat of your brow that you've done as a studio to, to showcase the skill that you have, uh, to maintain, produce and build a, a customized in-house version of UE5 to still give this rendering fidelity to your audience. Um, but perform very close to where performance was coming off 427, then you're going to have a different type of reception and you are going to be championed by the gaming community in a much different way than a lot of the other games have been received. Um, so yeah, our goal, my goal, Wildock Studios uh, and our community are, is to give back and I wanted to introduce you guys to this fork feel free to fork it open PRs um, you know we have wonderful people over there and a dedicated channel for this fork uh, the hope is to keep this thing moving forward and in the advent that um, we can get it into future main uh, downstreams like five one five two or five three then we will and if you're someone who has been taking that action as well, following 
the same footsteps that have the examples that have been given by studios that have taken on this monumental task because let me not get it twisted i have said that this is a substantial amount of work in previous videos it is a substantial amount of work to do what embark has done like their flowers need to be given to them and it needs to be shouted from the rooftops and embark if you're listening um, i know you guys did a talk on um that the weight of chaos and the reason why you went with physics instead and you've you know spoken to media outlets briefly about some of your gi choices but if you could um you know um uh, and and not to say that you don't have plans for this because i know that cd project red is their flagship title they um there's a lot of love coming from epic to them and a lot of stuff that they're doing is making it back into maine you you guys are kind of flying in the face of the direction that I, I i think unreal engine is trying to go um there's a lot of uh realization of chaos versus physics that are happening even internally with engineers right now there's there is awareness about the weight and i know that like you can't really just go to maine and open a branch and be like yo here's physics back in ue5 like i know how things work and that's a little difficult but um it would be amazing for like maybe just presentations additional talks and knowledge sharing um i know that there's a, a plethora of people and studios out there that could benefit from the learnings that you guys have have gone through and and uh while i know that um that's asking a lot because intellectual property is a competitive advantage and you guys are knocking it out of the freaking park so regardless of anything uh nothing but love given to you guys um yeah Keep a lookout for the MR3D Dev Talk, that the additional podcast episode that'll be coming out. Um, we'll be talking about some of this. Uh, peep out the description for the link to this GitHub and links to the Wildock Studios Discord. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Happy developing. Uh, leave your comments down below. And until next time, guys, toodles.